again and welcome back everybody to another edition of the rural report i am your rural 2 ic and uh happy sunday morning to you so this is going to be another one of those viewer intel reports uh it's probably going to be a little bit of a uh, shorter video just because i didn't get a whole lot sent in to me which could be a good thing right uh now if you don't know what i'm talking about uh, we have started this up. It is rather new, actually. And basically, it is if you have any sort of topic, news event, boots on the ground information, you will take and send it in to me. There is my email address. Uh, just send in what you have. And, you know, if it's a video, a link or something, uh, you know, if it's a longer thing, Maybe try and narrow it down for me so I'm not spending uh, three hours watching a video when you only want me to see, you know, five minutes of it. So with that being said, uh, there is some interesting things, if you will, of uh, some of the stuff that got uh, shared with me. Uh, the first one is going to be this one here. Uh, this is going to be a bread recall. Uh, and it's kind of an update as the FDA issues a new risk level. Now, on this, if we go back and we watch this uh, video, which I won't be playing, uh, basically they're saying because uh, there is milk in the, the product, the bread, so right there, undeclared ingredients. So they're saying people that have a uh, milk or a dairy allergy, uh, this is all this is. So it's actually kind of interesting uh, that this is making some headlines because we all know people only read headlines, right? So very, very interesting stuff there. So let me switch over to the next one here. And it's going to be kind of similar, if you will. And let's see, it is going to end up being, and I should have put these in order, so you're going to have to bear with me for just a second, because apparently uh, they decided that they were going to uh, switch around on me. All right, here we go. So thousands of pounds of liquid egg products recalled by manufacturer should be thrown away. Now, the interesting part is that if you get down into this one here, that they are basically saying about the same thing where it contains milk, which is an allergen. And they're saying basically the same thing as the bread, which I found to be very, very interesting that you're having two different things. So now you're going after eggs. Now you're going after bread, <clears throat> excuse me. And now you're just doing it on kind of the same thing. So again, there's a ton of people that they'll go in and they will read the headlines and they won't actually get into the article and find out. And that creates panic and things like that. So uh, one is calling it misbranding. The other one said mislabeling. Uh, you know, you get all sorts of different things like that. So let me switch back over. And we will share the next one. And so these ones I also found to be extremely interesting. So this one is kind of fun because right here, prep smarter, 16 money pitfalls that every prepper must avoid. Now, if you go up here to the address bar, that is an MSN sharing this uh, article. And you kind of have to flip through the, the pictures but this is very basic stuff. Don't overspend beyond your means. Kind of a dumb moment, right? Uh, not setting clear financial goals. Again, very basic. Uh, this one, ignoring your credit score. Um, probably the only one in this one, as I flip through it, that doesn't really have much of a thing, uh, depending credit score, not credit score, whatever. Uh, right here, not having an emergency fund. Again, very basic not diversifying your investments, making sure that you have uh, not all your eggs in one basket, right? Not keeping a budget. Again, this is all uh, very, very basic stuff, but it's it's good that you're starting to get to where uh, this is prepping and, and being able to 
uh, get into the prepping community is starting to become very mainstream. So you're going to start seeing a lot more of this basic stuff start coming out into the public awareness. Um, and then right there, buying unnecessary or low quality gear. Uh, it's one of them things that, uh, you know, if you do have the money, let's say you have $50 that you're going to put towards preparedness and uh, you go out and you go, well, here's a really, really nice blade for 30 bucks or here's this, you know, really, really cheap one for five bucks off of whatever.com. Uh, you know, if you have the money to get a better quality, absolutely go for the better quality one. Now, uh, does money and, and a higher price always equal better quality? No, not by any means. You have to do your research, uh, talk to people, see if there's a way, a lot of like firearms and things you can go test out before you actually buy them. Uh, talk to people, ask on online communities, talk to people that you know in person, see if maybe you can go over there and put something in your hand. Uh, every product is not perfect. They should all have downfalls. So if you are reading a review or, or anything along those lines and all they do is completely rave about the great stuff, then there's something hidden. Uh, now that's either on purpose or they just haven't found what that hidden thing is and that, that you know underlying negative could end up being a make or break for you. So make sure that you do your due diligence and do all of your research, right? All right, so let's switch over to the next screen. And this one is going to be, uh, again, kind of an interesting one because here we are, we're talking about, are we close to the end of the world? Uh, and again, it's another one of those ones up here by uh, MSN. And it's it's very, very basic stuff, okay? So in the first one, they're talking about preppers. And then in the second slide, uh, you know, they're going more on the different things that people prep, Y2K, 9-11, different other things like that, right? And then uh, they're showing you, hey, make sure you, if you're going to do this, be organized. That's a good, you know, thing. Uh, look at the way that you shop and things like that. Again, a great point. Uh, there's one here of decades preparing on the purchase. So, uh, you know, this is starting to get into a, a lot of, you know, the people has been doing this for a long time. Uh, here's, you know, kind of the failure point. But this next slide is what I really want to focus on is preppers have some good ideas. Well, no, duh, right? <laughs> uh, there's a lot of people that's just now finding out about the preparedness community, or they're starting to realize that maybe these people aren't as crazy as I once thought, and they're actually a, a good resource. They're, they have knowledge and things like that that they can pass on. And so I found it very, very interesting that you know they kind of put this in mid uh, sequence here, if you will. But uh, I, again, I like this. Preppers have good ideas. Uh, yeah, yeah, for the most part, there's a lot of us that uh, we, we tend to have a little bit of experience and knowledge. And that's kind of the whole purpose of us being on here, right? Is to be able to go through and share. Uh, then they go on, talk about canned goods and, and you know, the different process and, uh, you know, all the different other things that go into it, freeze-dried foods and and all that fun, good stuff. But that's uh, the one that I wanted to uh, focus on on that one. But let's go ahead and get into the last one that one of you all sent me to it, which I found to be uh, very, very interesting. Let's see. It is this one here. Look at the, the fun zombies right there, right? So 15 zombie proof foods for when the world ends. So they give you that big, huge, flashy title, zombies, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's see what they're going to talk about. First on the list is rice. Okay, can you guess what number two is? Uh, honey, can you take a guess on number three? Oh, yes, jerky, tomato paste, canned beans, peanut butter, bottled water, instant coffee, oats, powdered milk canned meat granola or energy bars dried fruit alcohol salt i'm very surprised that they put salt 
this late in the game, right? And switch over. And so they are also going in at the very late things. Uh, you know, regrow your grocery store, 13 foods that come back to life, blah, blah, blah. They're trying to get you to go into more uh, clicking and things like that, right? But again, you're going to start seeing a lot more of this very, very basic stuff come to fruition. As the prepping starts to become more mainstream, you're going to end up start seeing a lot of this really basic stuff. Now, it's good to go in there and look at it, okay? Uh, sometimes those basic things, because we get caught up into the flashy, or we get caught up that we're trying to learn the advanced, we forget about the fundamentals. And so there might be a hole in your prep, a hole in your inventory that one of these, uh, you know, small little simple basic prep things might be that aha moment. Wait a second. How is my honey stash? Is it getting a little low? I haven't looked at it in a while. It's great reminders. Go ahead and look at them. Uh, take and make sure that you have them all covered. There's a lot of people that's been prepping for years that you will start talking about fundamentals and all of a sudden they go, wait a second. That is pretty basic, but I never even thought about that. Okay. Uh, we all don't know everything, and it's all about how you're being taught. If you're being self-taught, if somebody else is teaching you, a mixture of both, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of ways to learn. And so you have to make sure that you're absorbing as much as you can. Uh, you know, don't think of it, no matter how long you've been trying to prepare, that something is down here. It's beneath you. It's basic. I've already got all that covered. It's a great reminder to go back in and relook at some of your stuff. It's a great thing. Uh, we've talked about this a lot on this channel. It's kind of like in sports. You know, you lose a game that you shouldn't have uh, most of the time, at least in my tenure. Uh, coach goes, you know what? We're going back to fundamentals. No more of this showboating. No more of this, uh, you know, hot dogging and, and parading around and, and showing off. Uh, we're we're going to go back to uh, wind sprints and push-ups and things like that. And everybody hates them, but they're basic. That's the point. It's that foundation. Without a foundation, it, it you know things don't matter, right? We we've learned about that a lot in the past. So uh, that's all I've got for you. So I hope you got something out of this, a little bit of substance, a little bit of of knowledge and and whatnot that you can take with you. There's some pretty interesting things in the news. And again, if you have something that you would like to submit to me, then there is my email address. Just send me a link, send me the article, the video, the picture, whatever it is. Uh, give me a little bit of insight on what you're trying to have me uh, look at. And I will go through and uh, make a video every Sunday and share them out with you. So again, all of this is sent in by you, the viewer and the subscriber. So I appreciate that very, very much because without it, uh, I wouldn't have a video for Sunday, right? So uh, if you made it this far in a video, guess what? You rock. I appreciate you so much for spending a little bit of your time with me. I hope you have an amazing day. I hope you have a blessed day. Stay tuned because there is definitely more information to come. And I want to remind you to remain united because we're all prepping in this together.